That's right. That's right. You know, for me, this topic has been so interesting and so drawing because many in the Israelite community, they see the Talmud, otherwise known as the Gemara. They see the Mishnah. They see these as add-ons. They don't believe that this is what we call Torah Sheval Peh, right? They don't see this as that which Moshe receives on Mount Sinai. So they think that these are just a compilation of wise rabbis and their words and their commentary. So I've even heard a person say, why don't we have our own Talmud today and our own Mishnah today? And I think when a person makes those statements, when you're, when you're learning on the topic, it becomes clear that we're not really understanding or grasping what these items are because the Mishnah is not the opinions of individuals. That which is recorded came from Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, right? And Moshe transmits it down the line. So we know these things for a fact. And one of the reasons why it's so important to have this central body of teaching is that Hashem desires that we should all be on the same page when it comes to keeping his Torah. So if we should all be on the same page, then everything that we're reading in terms of the Torah, we should be able to see and internalize as one, right? We, we, we are not allowed to deviate and we should be uniform. So the Torah certainly tells us to make zitzit, right? Mm -hmm. But where in the Torah does it tell you how to make it? That's does right. it tell you how long it should be? Does it tell you what color it should be? Right. It does not. The Torah also tells us that we should slaughter animals. Yes. How do we slaughter animals? Exactly. Should I, should I go on YouTube and, and just pick my favorite guy? Or is there a method, right? So these are some of the things that we know and understand help to frame for us perfectly the need for the Mishnah and the Gemara. Because that which it is coming to do is coming to explain and expound upon. So I, I just want to make it clear for the listening audience, the Mishnah is not the opinions of great rabbis. Um, if you want to say the Talmud is, yeah, arguably you, you can say that. You can arguably say that with some parts of the Talmud because the Gemara offers great commentaries. But these commentaries are, are wisdoms that have been passed throughout the ages going all the way back to Moshe Rabbeinu. So I would be a little bit hesitant to even call that an opinion, right? So I'm going to share my screen for one moment, uh, Rabbi Yohana Chan, because I think you might even enjoy this, right? Because okay. in my community, they say, show me in the Tanakh. If it's not in the book, I don't believe it. So that's when I say, Rabbi, okay, coming right up. <laughs> so I'm going to show something really quick, right? We're in Devarim 5 and 28. And it reads, um, hallelujah. We ata po umad imadi, we ad bara elecha et hol ha mitswa, we ha huhim, we ha mishpatim asher tal maidem. I'll stop there. Hashem says to Moses, as he's standing at the foot of Mount Sinai, about to come down and give the children of Israel the two tablets of the law, he says to him, Stand here with me. And I will give you kol hamitzwa, the whole instruction. We hachukim, the decrees, the laws. We hamishpatim, the judgments. Then he says, Asher tal medem, which you shall teach them. You know what's significant here, Rabbi Yehonatan? Yes. The very word Hashem uses to describe how his Torah is going to be expounded upon is the plural form of Talmud. What's your thoughts on that, sir? Yes, they definitely share the same linguistic root, uh, lament, to, to, to learn. And so, yes, this is a very, this is a key verse to understand uh -huh. that this, this pasuk, this verse is teaching us that, there, that we are supposed to study those laws. And if we're supposed to study those laws, then we have to, if the laws were very clear and all explained in the text, in the Tanakh, then why would we have to study them? Why would, if we already know how to do them? So here we are, we can say that this text is teaching us that you will have to study them. And by studying means that dialoguing. And this is exactly what you'll find in the Gemara, in the Talmud. This dialogue between rabbis 
and why is this the law or why was this received such and such I and mean, who said such and such thing and you will find opinions which are not actually law or the, the halakha but they're there because the, those opinions are there to teach us why those opinions are not the law and that's right. as that's much, the very important or as important as that opinion which is the actual law Thank you so very much for pointing that out. And um, I, I, I have several classes that I do online, Rabbi. I have a Torah class. I have a Hebrew class. I have an introduction to Kabbalah. I call that Kabbalah 101, where I teach theoretical Kabbalah. Uh, just, just for those who may not know, uh, many Kabbalists uh, divide Kabbalistic learning into three major branches. That would be the theoretical branch, the meditative branch, and the practical branch. And so in my classes, I introduce people to the theoretical branch, right? And we begin to have discourse on very famous passages discussed in Kabbalah, such as Bereshit chapter one, right? Uh, Ezekiel 40, or an, as well as Ezekiel one, which we're gonna get to in a couple of moments with you. But on this last point, before I go into my next question, I just wanted to share the screen again, because I wanted to show the community that even the term Gemara, which is the more popular term when reading the Talmud. So for most people that uh, are hearing the word Talmud, they think that that's just a way to describe uh, the commentary to the Mishnah. Meanwhile, when you open the actual Talmud, it's actually self-describing itself as the Gemara, right? So it's popularly known as the Talmud, but people who are initiated into these truths, we refer to it as the Gemara. Now, as Rabbi Yehonatan expounded upon, the term Gemara denotes to expound upon, to expand, to complete, right? And the very first time we see it used close to that is in the book of Ezra, Hachoen, Ezra the, the priest. And that's in the book of Ezra 7 and 12. And I'll read. It says, um, Artak Shasta Melech Malchaya Le Ezra Chahana. Safar data di ele ela shemaya gemer u keenet. And here's the term right here gemer. This term is being used here to call Ezra a scholar, someone who offers great and powerful commentary, someone that gives powerful exposition, which later becomes the term gemara, used to describe what many people know as the Talmud. Your thoughts, Rabbi? Just before moving on to the next question. Yes, yes, that's right. I would just add that when we say Gemara, it ends with the letter Aleph. Mm -hmm. And the Aleph in the Aramaic language is serves as the definite, definite article. article. That's so right. Gemara is saying the, the Gemara, or the, the explanation, the, the expounding. On, Came. On Similar the to our, um, our brothers who are self-described as Samaritans, right? Uh, we say Hashem, they say Shema. Yes. Shema, because the definite article for them is also at the end, like Aramaic. That's correct. So, you know, these, these are all powerful ideas, and um, I'm honored to have someone like you in the building to, to discuss this with. So my next question for you, Rabbi Yohonatan, we're getting a little deep.